Hello, class. Today we're talking about chapters six and seven. This will hopefully be a very quick review of the key points in these chapters as they relate to your project. Now, first, of course, we have the big three. Whenever you are creating any products for online that includes social media as well as blog posts, remember to think before you post. Your feelings might change about something, but the internet is forever and it will come back to haunt you. Embrace any interactivity. You want to embed links, provide options for feedback, be a way to communicate between you and your audience. And you also, of course, want to incorporate multimedia. You don't necessarily have to for this project. However, if in the future you want to pursue any blog writing on your own, it is recommended to use graphics, video, slideshows, anything like that to make it a little more interactive and more than just words on a screen. And of course, you want to promote your work. So we're talking social media RSS feeds, which are subscriber based. Someone subscribes to the RSS and they're given updates every time you post anything. And you also have QR codes which come in handy when you have real life interactions. That's right, we're talking about meeting face-to-face, -face, which hopefully will happen more often in the near future. Now, if you aren't very familiar with RSS and QR codes, these are two links. I will post this information on Moodle, so you will be able to actually click these links and follow them and read more about RSS and QR codes. Now, to choose a topic. Of course, you want to pick something you like, something you're familiar with, and something that your audience will find engaging. Now, of course, we're going to go back to what we learned at the beginning of the class defining your audience. You wanna use your foci elements and try to develop your topic in a way that your potential audience would find engaging. And of course, you want to research your topic. That means checking reliable sources of information. And also, of course, since this is a blog, you can post any personal experiences you have with your topic. And now that we have a topic, let's find an angle. We're gonna avoid common post subjects. For example, you don't want it anything too broad that would be covered by several groups. So if you're discussing UFC, you might focus on the UFC women's division and even a subcategory of that. It could be a post about UFC women's division fighting style changes. Another example, of course, would be marketing. Instead of just talking about marketing, you can talk about marketing box subscriptions. And as a subcategory to marketing box subscriptions, the top five ways to gain new box subscribers. Okay, so we have a topic. We're basically figured out an angle. Now it's time to write. Now, of course, you want to gather all of your research and organize your materials, figure out what your key points are, and start writing your strong opening. It's going to be very similar to lead writing. However, you are able to have more of a personal style with this. It's a little more feature writing, so you aren't necessarily tackling all of your who, what, when, where, why, and hows right off the bat, you can develop it a little more in your, in your writing as you move along. Now, of course, you're also going to break down everything a little more for your online audience. This is more casual than a news web page area. So you can use more subheadings, smaller paragraphs, use graphics, videos, slideshows, some way to differentiate each subsection of content. And of course, you want to stick to your main point, make sure that you aren't uh, deviating too much from your, your focus. 
because your audience only has so much attention. And also what you're going to do is if you decide, okay, I have this main point, you'll make one point in one article and then you can embed links to all of your other articles from that article and help people navigate across your website to all of your content. Now, after you break down everything, you have it written out, as after you finish, go back and edit, check your work, review your grammar, your spelling, your punctuation, all the basics. You aren't necessarily using AP style because this isn't a professional news writing, whatever. It's a blog. However, think about other blogs you've seen whenever people don't use correct spelling or punctuation how often does it make you feel like the information they are giving you is less credible? Of course, you also want to let your voice shine. It's a good idea to allow yourself more leeway in this. You're going to have more of a personal approach and it feels a lot more genuine whenever someone actually writes in a way that's relevant to them instead of instead of just copying what other people are doing. And of course, we have some more tips for writing blog posts, some a couple of links with tips and tricks if you want to review a little more. Writer's Digest also has some information about improving your tone. And if you want to view a couple of online examples, of paragraph blogging, Pop Sugar would be something, as well as Dictionary Blog. They had a, a pretty good post that was both personal and included information and embedded links. Okay, now part two, let's talk about tweets and blurbs. Now, whenever you're writing online, of course, a lot of what people write is going to be shorter now when you're advertising your longer blog posts. It's generally speaking going to be about the same as writing tweets. So when you write tweets, you're looking at essentially adapting your lead, making it very short and understandable. So people will want to click on it. And also you're going to use all of your editing techniques, sentence structure is going to follow noun verb form. So that means using more action verbs, fewer prepositional phrases, because right, you only have 280 characters to get your main point across. You also want to check for smart substitutions. If there's no way for you to shorten your information anymore without it losing some of its pep or some of its uh, intensity. You want to shorten words in an understandable way, use simple substitutions when it makes sense, and of course, continue editing and tightening your tweet. I know tweets seem like something that should only take a few seconds, but if you're doing them professionally for your work, if you're a social media coordinator, PR person, any kind of online work, you want to actually go back, stop a second, reread what you wrote, and maybe even get someone else to read it and say, hey, does this make sense? And of course, after you, after you write your little sentence, you're also going to have hashtags include a micro URL of the primary blog post, news, whatever you're doing. You can create micro URLs using tiny URL or bit.ly. A few places like YouTube actually have a micro URL option embedded whenever you share. And also, of course, you want to tag any people or organizations who are involved in your story. And if you're replying to any comments on Twitter or on Instagram or wherever, 
make sure that you tag the person you're replying to. And that's it. Hopefully this helps you a little more as you finish writing your blog posts. Send me an email if you have any questions. Thanks.